We are excited to have Mike Corfidge here with us today for our Runners of Louisville segment. Um, he is a runner who has been running all around Louisville for many years. If you were at Seneca Park or really basically anywhere, you've probably seen him. But we're excited to have him. He is the co-founder of the Corfidge Running Group. And so we are excited to talk to him. Welcome, Mike. Thank you. Thanks for having me. You've probably seen me wearing a GoPro on my head. That's how you recognize me. That's very true. <laughs> <laughs> he always has a GoPro. Let me just say that, I don't, have you ever seen the, the, show, the uh, Sesame Street uh, part where they do the one of these things is not like the other? Have you ever seen that? I'm sure There's I have. a skit on Sesame Street. They go, one of these things is not like the other. I'm talking about the three people that were before me on this Runners of Louisville. I mean, you had Mike Eaton, you had, which is, I mean, everybody knows Michael Eaton, uh, Maggie Allen, mm -hmm. my gosh, I mean, her interview was awesome. I, I, I don't yes. know her personally, but it was really good. And then Jacob, I'm, I've known him forever. Right. I'm best friends with his uncle, was his roommate in college. Um, so I'm trying to figure out why I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> you are here because of your like your love for running and um, what you offer to the community and what you have built. And coming back from school for me, I was gone from 2014 to 2018. But when I came back into the Louisville running scene and being in Swags, I kept hearing about you, and I'm like, who is this guy? <laughs> and so, but which is pretty cool because now when you go places, like people know you on Strava, you are encouraging everyone. And so Runners of Louisville is more than having all these accolades like JT or Maggie or Michael Eaton, but it's really about getting to know the runners in Louisville and yeah. who make okay. up the running community. And you make up a large percentage of the running community because you're encouraging everyone. You're out there and you, like people in Louisville know who you are. And yeah. So. Well, I agree to that. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> so now you feel worthy, right? I feel worthy. Okay, Thank good. You. So we want to just kind of get this started and just kind of hear a little a little bit about you, um, who you are, how you got into running, a little bit of maybe family background, stuff like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, well, I, I didn't run as a kid. Yeah, I didn't run in high school. I actually ran a little bit across country in grade school, but it was just to stay in shape for soccer. I played soccer from age six to age 32 and loved it, loved everything about it. But it's really odd that I never ran. Like I just didn't go out and run. It was always just practice I would yeah. run. <clears throat> but um, played soccer forever. So maybe that's where I get the endurance from. Right. Uh, my dad ran. Uh, he's a good friend of Swags. Mm -hmm. He we grew up out in the South End and he would drag us to his races, and they always had the little kid race, you know, mm -hmm. that was like a one mile or a two mile, and I hated it, <laughs> hated it, because I knew my legs would hurt and burn, and it was just, there was nothing good about it. And um, he would always ask me, as I got older, hey, you wanna go for a run? I never said yes. It was always, no, nah, I'm, I'm gonna go to the gym, or I'm doing this tomorrow, or whatever. And one day he asked me, and I was thinking, I was like, you know what, he asked me all the time. No, I'll just go. And I did, and it was very enjoyable because it wasn't a race. It was just right. running and talking. And I held on to that memory, even though I didn't really get into running until I was 33, when I stopped playing soccer at 32, I held on to that memory, and I was like, you know what? I'm going to start running. I'm going to train for this Triple Crown that I, everybody does every year. Right. And that's kind of how I got into actually running. So soccer for 30 years and started at 33 to start running, and now I'm 48, and I hope I'm running till I'm 100 because I love it so much. So what about it do you love? What, what now? Because you hated it, and then you got a taste of it. And now you want to run till you're 100. So what about that? It's the, the teaching of it, for one. I coached uh, cross country at St. Patrick for a couple years. And I used to just coach soccer because my kids would play soccer or whatever. And I started coaching cross country because I wanted to get my daughter into running. And it's such a great teaching sport because you're teaching kids not to just 
run fast, you're teaching them to be mentally stronger. And that goes with, with everything, like not just sports, like school. Mm -hmm. Be stronger, be mentally stronger when you're studying, doing your homework, when you're trying to do something, when you're trying to apply for a job, or when you're trying to do anything in life, if you were just engaged and stronger mentally and not quit and give up, it's amazing what you can do. So that aspect of it is incredible for me. Like I pull to that. I want to share that with people and let them know that running isn't just about, oh my gosh, this is so hard. You know, that's just the first mile. And everybody right. knows the first mile is the worst part. Right. But learning how to get through all that hard stuff and then what you see on the other side is just, uh, it's incredible. And then the people you meet. Mm -hmm. I mean, we do a sport that is, the old phrase is, it's other sports punishment. Right. But in reality, the people you meet when you're running, you're suffering with them. Whatever you're doing, especially like if it's a workout or a long run, you're going through hard times together. And that only solidifies which, the bond that you have with these people. And when you get to meet and hear their stories and see people that want to do the same thing you do. They have the same passion. You know, you want to run. All you want to do is be able to run. Mm -hmm. You don't want to be injured. Right. Right? You know that, <laughs> Oh, right? yeah, trust me. <laughs> I'm over it. I mean, you just want to run. And then there's thousands of people just like that, just in the city, that just mm -hmm. want to run. They want to be able to run. And you start meeting people and you start, you know, having functions. And, I mean, we've done so many great things in Louisville that just get people together, have a great run or something, and then have some fellowship with that, whether it be going out, having coffee, having a beer, or just talking, or just anything. It's really cool to see the the group dynamic that running has. That, uh, you know, it, it's a lot of sports I don't think has have that. Right. You know, so I love it. Yeah, and those friendships, like you said, and we've had the same conversation in Jacob's interview, Maggie's and Michael's, everyone says the community aspect, mm -hmm. and that's so much of what running is, and the friendships that you build. We all have talked about in those interviews and with you of how all of those friendships, it just translates into the next, like, stage of life, and being injured, you know, you don't get that um, time to hang out with people, and right. that was the hardest part for me, and the last one is, like, that's my friend group. And yeah. so we spend so much time running because we're all going to run. Yeah. And then you go and like, okay, if we don't have that, then it, you have to like plan other times, but we automatically are going to go run. Right. So. You're going to run and you're going to meet people. You know, you, it used to be you would go to a race, a 5K, and you would see the usuals, the people that you knew were going to kick your butt. Yes. And the people you knew you were going to try to kick their butt and then just people that were there at every race. Mm -hmm. And I think with the the help of the Strava app, which allows you to connect with some of these people that you see all the time and, and comment on their runs and say, hey, man, that was a great run, or hey, do you want to meet up and, and do a long run this weekend or something like that? I think it's incredible that you can, you can gravitate people together and do stuff like that because I used to see people in just, like in a race, I knew so-and-so was going to beat me. But it doesn't really matter because now I see those same people and I want to know them. I want to train with them. I want to run with them. Mm -hmm. I want to get beat by them because that's only going to make me run harder, you know, because in reality, nobody really cares about what you're doing. Right. They just, you care and some people care, right. but no, in the grand scheme of things, nobody really is that worried about your time in a race or how fast you did this they just want to run mm -hmm. so i'm all about running yes i, <laughs> I can tell <laughs> which is great um and is that part of how corfedge got started kind of tell us about how all of that because it's competitive and then you've just got a huge community it's out kind of, of that. a cult <laughs> <laughs> well i was trying to be nice here <laughs> oh they but. know it uh, honestly, the, it started as a joke. Um, I'll tell you how the guy that I met, so my name is, my last name is Corfidge. Mm -hmm. So that's this part. Right. And then Tracy Edgerton is the edge. Right. 
So we just combined our, na our last names. And it started as a joke, you know, it's because it sounds like Corfidge. Uh -huh. If you don't say it right, it just sounds like my last name. Right. Um, but this guy, Tracy Edgerton, used to coach Mercy for a long time. He's actually now coaching the sales. He is, with Rob Young, one of our employees. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And uh, which is awesome because he he's pretty much the guy that got me into running marathons. You know, he always calls me the, the 5K guy because I, I would just run 5Ks, 5Ks, 5Ks. And we were at a party one night. I used to go to St. Michael, and um, somebody at St. Michael was having this party. And we're at this party, and all they're talking about is their trip to Chicago, this marathon they ran in Chicago. And at that point, I had not run a marathon. I had run maybe two or three half marathons. And I know how I felt after a half marathon. I was like, there's no way I can do that again. My hips hurt. My calves are cramping. You know, there's, that's crazy. So we're at this party, and, I mean, they're just, and I know these guys, but I was like the outsider listening to all this great fun they had on this trip to Chicago. I mean, they had this huge, we used to run for a, a, a charity called Team Molly. Mm -hmm. And a friend of ours' daughter um, so what they do is they raise money for special needs children and they get uh, medical supplies for these special needs children that insurance won't cover. It's an incredible charity. And we would run, they, they would sponsor us, we'd run in their shirts and everything. So we're all there and there must have been 20 people that went to Chicago just from our church. Okay. And so I was like, man, that sounds like fun. <laughs> And on the way home, I remember telling my wife, I go, I'm, I'm, I'm going to run a marathon. I said, I want to be that. Like, that's what I want to be a part of. And that was uh, like 2000, I don't know, 11, no, 10, 2010. Okay. So I said, all right, I'm, I'm going to train in the spring, and then in the next fall I'll do Chicago with them. And it was, it was awesome. I trained up, ran Chicago. I was – it's still my slowest marathon to date, but I was humbled, and it hooked me hard. It was like, this is what you want to do. You want to do something that you almost can't do, and you're going to find a way to do it. So he got me started, and we would meet up for runs, and um, sometimes we would meet up for runs, and then we'd have a beer afterwards. Or we would just meet up and run, or we'd train on the weekends and run long runs together. So we had a really good bond because our our theories lined up really similar. You know, he was his attitude and what he wanted to do, and his uh, you know just show up, do the work, don't complain attitude was exactly how I felt. So we bonded perfectly, and then we started like trying to pull other people into what we were thinking. And taking away their excuses. You know, we have one guy show up without shoes at the track for a track workout. And was he playing long running? Yeah, he was, no. He's like, <laughs> it was kind of like, ah, I forget. Pat Monjo, I'm going to say names if I've got <laughs> stories. Showed up, no, nah, I forgot my shoes. Uh, we were like, we got you. I pulled, I had a pair of shoes in my car. Tracy had two in his locker at Mercy. It's like, where's your excuse now? Here you go. You know, I had uh, somebody else show up. Uh, Tom Morrissey showed up at Mercy to run a track workout, and he forgot his shorts. Mm. And it was spitting snow, like ice snow. We had just finished our workout. And he's like, ah, guy, I forgot my shorts, whatever. And Tracy's like, you can run in Dockers? So he did. He did his workout in his Dockers. It helped that it was cold, so right. it probably helped him. But he did it. So we, we were joking, like, you know, we're just taking away everybody's excuse. That's all we do. And somebody's like, man, you guys need to start your own run group. Just taking away everybody's excuses. You know, call it something. Call it Corfidge Edge or whatever. And they said Corfidge. And from that point on, it was a running joke for like a year. Okay. You know, it was like, hey, we're going to, Corfidge is getting together or something. And then it turned into, we need to get some shirts made. And then it turned into getting a, a group me and adding people to it and showing up together. And now it's it's blown up to a cult it's it's a cult well it's the coolest one to be a part of <laughs>
and we got a we we've got this group me that has like 200 people on it mm-hmm. and about 80 percent of them turn off their notifications right. because it's like meh, meh, it's the phone's buzzing all day long mm-hmm. they can't get any work done but the funny thing is it's not just about running like people are putting pictures of their newborn kid on this group me and it's like there's happy birthday wishes you know almost every other day well, and yeah but 200 people you can I mean, almost cover. Yeah, every other day there's some and and there's there's always something talking about shoes talking about injuries talking about whatever just sending advice you know, asking advice you know random craziness uh run group meetups everything to the point now where you better have a side chat going on with somebody if you want to meet them because you're going to scroll all the way up to find out what the workout or the run right. is. <laughs> you can't find it. Like, where are we meeting? And then yeah. you have to go, go through, like, about pages. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. One guy said, he goes, every night I just get on there and it's like reading. He goes, it's like comic relief. <laughs> it's so funny. But um, we had, and then one guy, he goes, maybe we ought to have a separate group made just for the run stuff. I was like, man, that sounds boring. No way. We're just, this is it. Right. If you can't keep up, text me on the side or something. We'll figure it out. Right. So we have a really great time. We, we, uh, we've got a great group of people. And that's what makes a good group is right. the people. It's not, you know, this group here is faster or they do more miles or whatever. It's these people are just good people. Right. And it's, I, I love them, and I'm so glad to be a part of it. You know, I, I get more notoriety because my name's on it, but I feel like I'm as happy as any of them just to be included, you know, with some of these people. Right. So it's a, it's a blast. Yeah, and it's all about living life with people, right? It is. That's what that is. Yeah, and exactly. Talking, that's what it's become like at first it was just like running together and it really was you're living life and then it just grows and then you're living life with 200 people but yeah you all care about each other and that's it in thinking about you and just what this running group is it's yeah like yes you want to run fast and you want to be able to compete but you're going to be there cheering on everyone else and you get just as much enjoyment it's a little bit it feels a little bit different but if someone prs like, oh my gosh, yeah. It's just like so yeah. satisfying. I get goosebumps and, thinking about other people yes. PR and like that. I mean, it's just amazing when you can when you can just see the joy that their hard work paying off, all that kind of stuff. You're right. You're absolutely right. It's it's not all about you. It's about helping everybody else besides you. You get your help. Right. You work, you you run with people, you get what you need right. as far as workouts and fitness. But pushing other people and pulling other people along or just supporting other people, you know, right. just being there, checking. I make it a point to try to check on anybody that's hurt mm-hmm. because it's a, it's depressing. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you know, you keep pointing that out. I mean, <laughs> I see you on the bike and I know you'd rather be out running, mm-hmm. but it is, it can be very depressing when you're sitting there, especially like for me, when it's warm, mm-hmm. I, I mean, it's, it's bad if I can't run and it's warm Mm -hmm. and you just want them to know that it'll be okay. Right. You know, you can still come out and we had some people that couldn't race with us, you know, last week. Mm -hmm. So, so what you can't race, but you can still come out and take pictures, you know, come out and just, we're going to have a beer afterwards, come out and have a beer or just come out and talk to us or see other people what they're doing. All these other people are out here doing something come out here and just be a part of it, right. you know? So it's not always about just, you know, doing your best. Sometimes just the support you give is enough. Right. So. Well, and talking about last weekend and the last few, we did the River City Club Challenge, mm. which is a really cool thing for Corfidge and Pacers and Racers, Swags and yeah. LDP and Fleet Feet and the YMCA, but just a cool thing and shows what the running community is like how you bring groups from different or different groups in Louisville, but how we can all come together and do something great and fun. Like, yes, it was a competition and we were definitely competing, Mm -hmm. but it was open to everyone. Right. And so just having something like that, what's kind of your perspective of that and the fun that you had getting your team ready and just also getting to know other people. I know I've heard from on my team is like, Oh, 
now I know who that person is because yeah. they follow me on Strava. Yeah. And yeah. like, oh, I saw this person and I saw that person, which you don't necessarily get to see in the Triple Crown or KDF because there's thousands of people. Exactly. But when you just have those people that are part of the running community there, you're mm -hmm. like, oh, that's that person. Yeah. And that's, it was that really, person. it was really an intimate kind of race, you mm -hmm. know, even though there were over 200 people in right. it, to see the people that, the one guy on our team, he goes, he said, Tom uh, Bazell said, uh, this is like my, you know, when Strava says uh, people you should be following, he goes, it's like the whole list of people I should be following is here today at Aircoy. <laughs> but it was, uh, it was amazing. Mm -hmm. You know, it was, it was something dreamed up by Danny Chester. Yes. And he has a way of, of thinking really out of the box sometimes about what can we do you know, especially with this pandemic. Yes. I mean, races are canceled. Uh, there's nothing to aim for because you don't know if it's going to happen or not. So it's all started back in last August as a group. We were, everybody's just dying to do something. Mm -hmm. to, everybody's fit. Right. You know, the pandemic uh, actually turned out to be good for a lot of people. Yes. You know, you don't have your spring races, so you don't have the the wear and tear on wearing your body out on some marathon, all of a sudden you're just training and you've got this fitness built up and then you've got more time because some people, you know, are in quarantine or something. Right. So they're, they're just spending their energy working out or your job changes to where you're not going in all the time. You, you work from home. So maybe you can get out and do more running. All of a sudden people like I can remember early in the pandemic, it was like all of a sudden it, everybody in the neighborhood realized they could go out for a walk mm -hmm. and the place I mean, just crowded people were walking everywhere and there you could tell there was fitness happening so everybody needed something and we decided to do a thing it was called our august challenge and what we did as a group we we talked about it might have been 70 or 80 people into doing this out of our group you are go, we're going to divide you up into three teams so there would be three captains and then they would just go through and it was like a, a lottery you know you're just you're just uh, recruiting people mm -hmm. so this guy picks next guy picks he picks and then you go back this way and you just keep going and you're trying to draft your best team you know and and the, and the draw of it was we were going to have three we we're going to have three races it's going to be a 5k a uh, five miler and a 10k but total mileage also counted. So as soon as the thing started August 1st, all of a sudden everybody's running like two and three times a day. You know, you got guys going for hundred mile weeks all of a sudden. And so it was like, all right, hang on now. Let's not get hurt We're gonna make here. Sure you get here to the end. <laughs> yeah, really. So, but it was, it was awesome because, you know, everybody was so into it. And even though you're on competing teams, uh, you're still part of the same group. So you love seeing, like I would spend, you had the whole week to race these. It wasn't just one day. Okay. So if they were doing the 5K, it's like, all right, when's, when are they doing it? When are they doing it? It's like, oh, Thursday afternoon or, you know, Monday morning or whatever. Mm -hmm. I would try to get out there and film as much as I could because it was so fun to watch this go down. And that turned into just a great thing for our group. And everybody learned a lot and we kind of, we kind of got used to this Strava segment challenge thing. So that in turn turns into this River City challenge where we made three segments. You know, it was a five, it was just like the Triple Crown, but it's not virtual. I mean, you're racing the actual race, the, the actual course. Right. Everybody's got the same course. It's a Strava segment. You go out and get it anytime that day, you just go get it. And uh, those days were awesome. Yes. to be a part of like the first day of the 5k I was filming and I didn't even want to stop filming but I'm like man I got a race I wish I would have <laughs> raced earlier so I didn't have to right. stop and then the 10k was unbelievable because it was one day yes and then the 10 miler same way it, and then out and back was even better because right. you're seeing people coming out you can cheer them on you know coming and going it was just uh, my my team was texting me the day after it was over asking 
what's next? What are we going to do next? That was so fun. We, we need to do something else. So keep your eyes open. There might be something else. <laughs> Not right now. We're going right. to decompress a little bit. Right. But it was a blast. It right. was fun. I know ours are saying... I wonder how many times I'm going to check Strava in a day. Yeah. Like, keep and going everybody's up. got the exact same map. <laughs> yes. And they're like looking at the leaderboard like, okay, this person just ran. And yeah. it's just. And then you got to scroll like, through all the warm ups and cool downs and yes. like, come on. <laughs> like it's so full and it's just like River City Club Challenge yeah. like, over and over and over again, which is so exciting that you had that many people that excited about it from all different groups. Yeah. I mean, it was, there was over 200 people. We were able to raise over a thousand dollars i don't know how much the charity total was but don't make me do math right now <laughs> it was it was yes. every team got to donate every last place team in the division got to donate their portion of the money to whatever charity they wanted so right. there was an incentive just to show up and not get disqualified right. i mean it was just a it was a great event and i was glad we were a part of it yeah super fun yeah but now kind of talking about racing, um, what is probably like either your favorite race to like keep going back to, or is there a memory of like, this is mm. my all time favorite race? I know you've had some big moments at some races too, whether or not it's times or just things happening. Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously I love going to Boston. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I go every year ever since I qualified, uh, I went the year after the bombing, so it was 2014. Right. And at, ever since then, it was like, I can't wait to get back here and do this again. And my dad goes with me every year. Same, we got the same routine every year. We've stayed at different hotels, and we've kind of figured out which hotels are better and stuff. Right. But it's just, a, it's an incredible. And the first year I went, I didn't know anybody. You know, I was like, I can remember being on the bus, trying to talk to people and the guy I was sitting to he was, he was like this and I was like oh come on man I need some I need some interaction right and so I get the athletes village and it was hot and I'm sitting on the grass and I'm looking around and there was like you know groups of 10 over here and they're talking and there's groups there and I'm just trying to I found one guy we kind of talked for a little bit but I was like man I need to meet some more people right and the next year I had a a friend of mine that was going so we had you know a group of a couple of us maybe it might have been two or three three or four of us and that morphed into every year i went i tried to find out who all was going and that turns into hey we're getting there this day we're going to do dinner this night if you can meet up so we you know we would have these big you know 20 people would show up for dinner the last time we were there we did a shakeout run you know the day before right there was 22 people from the Louisville area there wow. at the shakeout. I'm like, this is incredible. Like right. all these people that you usually see at Seneca, or, you know, right. they're here in Boston ready to run this race. And we specifically waited for like one bus to get on. We got to the back of the bus and we're, I mean, it was like a party. It was right. really a great time. And I said, this is the way to do it. If you're going to go try to either find somebody else that's up there or whatever, but it's just been, I love it. I love going. The, the one year, it was uh, 2017, was when I had to carry the guy. Right. So I'm on, I'm on, I was on pace for, I was trying, I've been trying to get sub three there for a long time. And I blew up, calf, bad. And I'm coming down Boylston, and I'm probably six minutes, eight minutes over my, my, time that I wanted so nothing mattered it was like right. six minutes over 12 minutes over it doesn't matter now right. and I look up and I see this guy and he's running and he's leaning to the side while he's running but he he trying to run straight and he can right. tell something's up I said well I can, if I can just get next to him and he can lean on me we'll just it was perfect in my mind we'll just <laughs> we'll, I'll just shoulder him in we'll just finish like that as soon as I got next to him and he felt help he just collapsed like on the ground right in the middle of the street and his head's laying on my foot and I'm looking down at his head. I know he's just laying there and his eyes were all glassy and I'm looking at him I was like, are you okay? And this, these two military guys who they start at 6 AM and they walk the whole course and they do they're in twos and there's like 50 of them. So there, it's really cool. There's like a military presence during the race right. and they were finishing and they get, came down and they were, we were trying to 
see if he was okay. And people are running by him. You know, they're not stopping, right. but they're willing to tell us what to do. Right. Like, go get him help. I'm like, where are you going? <laughs> Come here and help us. You know, they're, right. they're you can all, at least get a hand. Yeah, they're gone. <laughs> they're like, oh, yeah, you can get some help. So I looked down at the guy and I said, do you want me to get you some help or do you want to finish this race? And he goes, I want to finish. But it was like slurred speech. And so I said, let's get him up. So we picked him up. The military guys had him. And then I was helping the military guy because he was, he was struggling to hold the guy. And then this other guy come over and we're all, there's four of us taking this guy to the finish. Well, I look back and his feet are just dragging. Like we're carrying him, literally. So I scoop a leg up. The other guy scoops a leg up and it's like a four man square carrying this guy across the finish line and the governor of Massachusetts catches it on uh, his phone and puts it on Twitter. And the next thing you know, I get back to my hotel room and I've got people calling me and trying to figure out what's going on and news wants to talk to me and all this stuff. So when I got home, I, you know, I'd set up and I had taken off my Team Molly shirt because oh. it was hot. Right. So we had set up these, you know, we're talking to Terry Miners, we're talking to uh, uh, Good Morning Kentucky or whatever. And I had the Team Molly people come with me, my friend Jojo and his wife. And uh, I, they, he, he's so funny. He goes, yeah, he goes, great opportunity to catch Team Molly on national TV. And what's he do? He takes his shirt <laughs> off. We get no exposure. <laughs> So it, it, it that got it, them some exposure just talking about it, but it was right. uh, it was really incredible to to help somebody turn, find out this guy I got a hold of. Him. He lives out in California. Okay. His body temperature was uh, 108, which is real well, bad. Well, yeah. Like organ failure, bad. Right. And he said he got two IVs and a submerged in an ice bath. And he said he feels great, but he was real thankful that we stopped. He didn't right. remember any of it. So I right. sent him pictures of us carrying him. <laughs> I said, there you are. You're the guy that we're carrying. Um, but somebody had asked me, they said, if you were like at 258 and you're going to the finish line and you see this guy, would you stop and help him then? And I was like, Hell no, man. I'm going to be like, get him some help. I got something to do. But now I think about that. You know, it's like, all right, if I don't help him, will somebody else? Right. Maybe they will. Maybe they won't. You know, there's no way to get wheelchair out there because everybody's coming, going this way and you got to come through traffic. So right. he needed to get to the finish line. And I'm thankful that I was in a position where I could do that. Um, now, if I would have stopped and helped then, I don't know. Right. You know, I'd, I'd say I'd hurdle him and keep going. Now, I think I probably would mm -hmm. because as I learn, as I get older, sometimes the time doesn't even matter. Right. It's like all the other experiences you go through in a race, you know, who you met, who you talked to, you know, what you did during the race. Those are the, the memories. Right. So Boston has a special place to me. However, uh, we did run New York as a group last uh, 2019, and that okay. was incredible. Like to run a race with a group of friends the whole way, and right. you know, videoing, high fiving, taking selfies, drinking right. beer. I mean, it was awesome. So New York holds a special place yeah. too. Sounds and right. Bourbon Chase. I mean, right. come on, how can you not yeah, include Bourbon Chase, that's right? That's true. <laughs> Talking about community and running with people. Yeah. You're definitely with people the whole time. Yeah. Well, not really at be. like 2 a.m. when you're actually running, but <laughs> all the other times you yeah. probably are with people. No. So. Yeah, Bourbon Chase is just a special, and it's four days after Boston this year, so that ought to be oh, really yeah. interesting. We've been talking about that, <laughs> so it is going to be. So I'm thinking we run Boston for fun, and then we have legs left to do Bourbon right. Chase, but who knows? I guess you have to it's, talk to your team and yeah, see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. Right. Well, cool. It sounds like, I don't know, all of that is still keep saying living life with people, you know, yeah. and bourbon chase is definitely living life with people. And that's, that's what matters, you know, mm -hmm. and that's what running, that's what running brings to the community. That's what running brings to your life and the excitement of that. So yep. super cool. And that's how we got connected is yeah. through, I, 
heard about you, but then Bourbon Chase, our teams were back and forth. And yeah, yeah, it so was which cool. is always so fun. And then everyone's telling me, Oh, this is who um, these people are and then getting to know you all, seeing you all at Seneca and now it's just like, Oh, these are all my friends too and that's yeah. what the running community is and that's what you're all about about. So Yeah, pretty, and competition is good. I mean mm -hmm. we needed your all's team to push us. Right. You know, like we were we had a cushion lead in the in our division right but as far as who we were actually trying to one up or race against or make us faster or make them faster i mean it was like back and forth right. it was really cool no it worked out perfect and then i needed you all for directions too when i had all my directions <laughs> it was like 3 a.m see and how I'm nice like, we are we even told you the right way to I go i was looking at my hand i had all the directions here and they're like no you're going the wrong way it's like oh thank goodness because <laughs> at 3 a.m you're trying to see oh, and those roads are yeah it's not i've gone the wrong way once and luckily it was just a quick turnaround but that's yeah, right. That's nerve wracking. Yes, especially there. <laughs> and 12 people counting on you not to go the wrong yes. way. <laughs> yes. So, well, kind of wrapping things up, is there like one thing that maybe a mantra that you have or one thing that you want to kind of maybe someone you want to shout out or just something that you want people to know about Mike? Uh, well, I tell you, I've, I've got uh, I've got so many people that that I would love to shout out, but the people that come to my mind are my dad, who still runs. Yes. You know, he's 75, he's just an animal. And I've got a lot of work to catch up to him. He's just, uh, he's so positive and insightful and he's always been like that. He's always been, you know, you don't get what you wish for, you get what you work for. And, you know, working hard is what matters. So, He's been instrumental in my whole life. And my mom as well. You know, they both are at work every single day to this day. They're both at work in their 70s and full of life. You know, just do anything for you, help you out. So they've been just a blessing to have parents like that. And my wife, who, I mean, I can't say enough good things about her. You know, she... She, I know, she knows that I probably run too much sometimes. And I have more shoes than she does. And, you know, it's just, she never complains about it. She's, she puts family first. You know, like tonight, I got home and, you know, she had, dinner was ready and I was like wolfing stuff down and I was out the door and, I mean, she's, She's what keeps me together. I'd be a loose cannon without her. <laughs> and my kids, I love my kids. I mean, I I wish they would run more with me, but I'll never force them. Right. You know, coaching, I learned that. You can't force somebody to do something or they'll just turn it off. But if they knew how much happiness, are these on, are these cameras on? <laughs> if they knew how much happiness just, running with me meant and we can run walk we don't have to run or sprint uh it's just incredible you know like i like i said I've, i always have my gopro with me right because you never know i used to say when are they going to make these watches with that you can take a picture with your watch right. because i don't like carrying my phone so I got this head strap, you know, you've seen it. Oh yes. It's like a, it's like I'm wearing a headlamp and I sometimes don't even know I have it on until I run by and look in the mirror and it's like, what's that thing? I... That's when you know you wear it too much. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm, I look like an idiot with it, but I always have it because you just never know mm -hmm. because I'm always taking pictures and I'll never feel guilty about taking pictures because mm -hmm. I've got so many great memories of all these crazy runs we've done and just random you know, Tuesday run that we did something or a long run, you know, now we're doing jump picks on long oh, runs. Yes. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's, it's hilarious. They're like, all over Strava. <laughs> yeah, just do a jump pick. You know, I got people that can probably dunk now because we've done so many jump picks. Working on their vertical. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just don't get hurt doing right. jump pick. Uh, but, you know, and then we're just trying to constantly come up with the next crazy thing that we're going to do as a group. And it's always fun, but obviously the the group is is what kind of keeps me motivated too. Right. I mean, they're just fun people to be around. For sure. And I guess you said 
getting your kids to run with you. Your dad said it took you 32 it, years to yeah, run with him. It took so me a while. it may take them a little while. I can but... wait. I think I can wait. <laughs> Just I hope I can still run. I, I mean, that's the go. I want to run. Um, there's times in life where you just want to hammer and go fast and PR and do this. And then there's other times when you get reality checks where you just want to run healthy. Right. And, you know, the older you get, the more that really resonates with me. It's like, I really just want to be able to run. Right. So, you know, I'm at that stage right now. I'm coming off of a small injury, but I want to just be able to run. I'm not worried right. about a race or anything. I want to just run. Right. And I know you can relate. Yes. It's just something that when you love running, you need it. Yes. And when you don't have it, you just wish you had it. Right. <laughs> it's all there is to yes, it. Yes, you don't always want to, like the after parties or like like your Thirsty Thursdays, yeah. like those runs or whatever. Like it's fun to hang out afterwards, but you want to do the work to get to enjoy it. Right. And so like... It is great that those people who are injured who can come and hang out and it gives yep. them a place to feel like they belong and stuff, but you still always miss the run aspect. Of exactly. It. So. We've got guys that show up to Thirsty Thursday without running. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I used to give them grief about it, but honestly, like that type of run is geared toward fellowship. Mm -hmm. There's no pace, you know, we, it's like whoever's the slowest, we'll just run with you or we'll break off in the groups. Right. And you get back and you have a beer. If you don't drink, you just, have water, but either way, you're just, it's fellowship. Right. It's talking, you know, spend a couple minutes. Some people spend a couple hours there, but just getting together. Yeah. We used to do this thing before the pandemic called Whiskey Wednesday. And Matt Phillips would have us in his house. We would go run five miles at Seneca and go back to his house. And there would be some theme, you know, it started off as just, uh, like, uh, power bars and beer and water. Right. And it turned into, catering like i'll get so and so to bring you know food and then it turned into us making our own food and bringing it <laughs> and whiskey wednesday became like i mean there's times we've had over 20 30 people at his house just on a wednesday wow it was only once a month right but it was a blast and then the pandemic shut it down and we haven't had one since we will have one again eventually right but um things like that Anything you can do to try to get people to run a little bit mm -hmm. and then hang out and talk for a little bit. Right. Because that's how you really get to know people. For sure. Both ways. I mean, you get to know them during running. Right. Especially in their, when they're struggling and they're right. telling you <laughs> their, their uh, worries and their fears. But, you know, just hanging out for a couple minutes after a run is, is a great way to just get to know people. You never know who the next person you run with, who, if they're going to be your best friend. Right. You know, it happens a lot. Yep, for so. sure. Well, thank you, Mike. Thanks for, Thanks for telling us me. all about living life and your group. And can't can't wait for the next challenge or whatever's oh, up, yeah. up your sleeve. And, something good. Oh, I have no doubt. <laughs> <laughs>